Tucked in a corner created by the Canadian border and the Pacific Ocean, the Pacific Northwest might seem a little out of the way to some people. It rains a lot and the terrain can be rugged, but most of us who live here like it that way. I think that we have the opportunity through the states that are uh, pursuing uh, recreational marijuana to find out a lot more than we know today. The soil, the climate, the trees, the rainfall, all combine to make the Northwest one of the outstanding timber regions uh, in the world. I grew up in the Northwest, the land of trees. However, I recently moved to Canada where the new Liberal government has begun the national legalization process. It makes sense. Taxing and regulating the market will provide much needed government revenue and put an end to many silly drug arrests. The only real argument against legalization is that there will be an increase in use by children and young people. I decided to hit the road, traveling around the Northwest seeing for myself what youth drug culture looks like post-legalization. Yeah, I think I think there's a good amount of people that smoke weed here. I wouldn't say like everyone, but it is in Seattle, Washington, where weed's legal. So I think a good amount of people smoke. Um, well, yeah, there are lots of different social groups. Um, personally, my group of friends um, we smoke daily, um, but then I also know people who will just do it on the weekends. Or and I know lots of people who have never tried it. There's all kinds. Like I know people that have smoked once and never done it again, or like smoked like two or three times and never done it again. They just decided it's not for them for whatever reason. But I also know people who smoke like every day. So it really just depends on like the person. Almost everyone I know here smokes weed on occasion, but like there's a difference between being a consistent smoker and like smoking. Yeah, like we smoke all day long, every day. Daily, I'd say I wake up and smoke and then shower and then usually smoke on the way to class and then like go to class and then do my work and then smoke again and then go to another class and probably smoke right after and just keep smoking until I either run out of weed or like it's two in the morning or something. I think I'm a little more on the extreme end, but like there are a lot of people I know who smoke more than me. I've been able to like understand how to like handle myself. A lot of like like how people can drink a lot because they like have drank a lot. It's kind of like that. But I'm a, I'm a horrible student. I don't take notes, and like I just I don't like to do any like schoolwork or anything. So I just like remember stuff for the test. Cause I have A's and B's, and I think only like maybe one C but that's like a C plus, and I do that all high, which people get really mad at me for because they can't understand why I can do that. It's those kids, the smart kids, they're not the ones that like to follow rules, right? A lot of the kids I see that are deciding to use and use more frequently are the ones that you would think would be the ones that are gonna change the world. And I wonder, you know, are we gonna lose the exact kids that we need to really bring some changes? I know kids who have all A's that smoke and smoke very regularly. Um, and feel that it's perfectly fine. And I'll say, what's the longest amount of time you've had being just completely sober? And, you know, they might say, well, a month, or family went on vacation, I couldn't smoke. You know, they don't even know what it would be like if their brain was completely sober. They have no idea. People who smoke all the time, like three times a day, multiple times a day, it pretty much that's, at that point, it's taking up a huge portion of your life. It kind of consumes your life, so those people kind of stand out. But I think the vast majority of people smoke either just on weekends or maybe are just social smokers. I know a lot of people uh, only smoke like when they're handed stuff at a party. I think that that's probably the vast majority of people who use marijuana, maybe not the vast majority, but the majority of people that use weed are kind of using it in a way where it's like, oh, I'm like at a party, you know, I'll take like a hit of the joint or I'll like rip a bowl or something like that. The majority of marijuana users are at least relatively responsible in college because most people cannot manage ha uh, letting a drug consume their life and continue to get uh, passing grades and stay in college. 
Um, I know some people do, some people smoke all the time. Whether or not people smoke more now that it's legalized is hard to say. I don't think anybody who would really like be a stoner would uh, like care whether it's legal or not. They're just gonna smoke weed anyway. But it might just, for people who like normally wouldn't smoke weed but just wanna try it, I definitely think a lot of more people would do that. I think a lot has changed. I think a lot more people are more accepting of weed. I think more people have like opened their eyes to like getting high because it's legal. It's a very liberal bubble. I'd say the attitudes about weed are very relaxed and very accepting. And I don't think that that really has to do with whether or not it's legalized. I think it's kind of independent of that. But now that it is legalized, you know, people are getting weed from dispensaries. People over 21 definitely go to dispensaries. Um, and people under 21, some have fake IDs so they can get into dispensaries. Most of my friends are under 21. So those of us with fake IDs will try to get it from a dispensary. But usually it's more expensive to buy it there. So we still usually buy it like under the the black market or whatever. We just buy it off friends. They're still in the black market with dealers selling weed at the same price they've always sold them. And I feel like students are not buying recreational weed because first of all, they're not 21. Secondly, it's just too expensive. It's too taxed. Um, like, everybody's smoking pretty much uh, in between classes uh, at lunch, you know? It's uh, pretty different. Now that uh, legalization has came along, you know, it's pretty easy to get weed now. Pretty much everyone here in Lincoln County is a pothead. <laughs> well, throughout the past few years, it feels like more and more, more stoners came up, and it seems like everyone smokes now everywhere you go. <laughs> it's a quiet, boring town, nothing else to do. Like in class, I'll see someone with red ass eyes, the teacher won't even notice, it's funny. Before school, break, lunch, after school, especially at the Newport High School, all the time, bro. Like, I started at 10, but that was before it was legal. People here, not usually, they're usually good at two shoes, they usually start at like 14. I was six years old when I tried it, and well, because my dad left the, his weed in his room, and but I went in there to go get an extra controller to play zombies with my brother, and then my brother came in and he told me what to do, and I did it, I liked it, and now I smoke marijuana. But. I used to smoke it a lot when I was a kid. Like at eight or nine, I started smoking more. Well, at six, I smoked like once every month or two. Then when I got to like eight or nine, I started smoking like every day. And then it went on from there. One of my friends' kid that, that's how their kid grew up. When the kid was like much younger, they couldn't figure out how to get him to stop crying and all that, so they just got him high. They just pass him a pipe and he's five years old and knows how to hit a pipe and that's what I think is not okay. Yeah, I used to do harder drugs and now I just smoke weed. So I used to do pills and drink a lot and now that I have my medical card and now that's legal for me to smoke weed, I've gotten off of all those drugs and I don't drink. I mean, the drinking has kind of gone down ever since marijuana like got big and shit. Prescription drugs such as Oxy, Xanax, those have all gone down in drug use ratings. I know a lot of people that did hardcore drugs and then after it came legalized, I know they started smoking weed a lot more than that. For better or worse, it looked like marijuana had taken over this community as the drug of choice. Of course, it's hard to tell how much of that is actually due to legalization. I know, for example, my high school had a huge culture of weed before it was legal at all. Smoke about three times a day. Like sometimes in the summer, definitely I smoke away now. <laughs> <laughs> One to three times a day. It's usually about 75%, 80% of my students in my class. I think kids are getting high every day, either before school, during lunchtime. Sometimes before school, we might hit a couple of bowls. It yeah. just, that's what wakes us up. That's what makes it's like us feel happy. No, no, it is. I was just saying, I was saying this this morning. I was like, No, I, I actually don't um, think that the legalization has affected how many people smoke regularly. Honestly, I think uh, the, the availability of weed in Cleveland has not decreased at all. Like literally, like I can go to the park next to my house, like five blocks away, and I can get it. Just like, it's that easy. 
Could, like, you, could you do that before legalization too? Just to yes, definitely. It's everywhere in Portland at least, you know what I mean? Like shout out to everybody who's gone all, all their life and without smoking weed. Like good for you. Like. Damn, man, that's hard to do. I think it's rampant. I think everybody uses it. It used to be it. It used to be kind of it seemed like it was more of a culture. Certain people would use it. Now I think it's athletes. I think it's scholars. I think it's um, everybody. I mean, I don't think there's a clear cut line who uses it and who doesn't. I think it's more of a norm. Everybody that I know smokes weed. I know probably like three people that I don't smoke weed, but. They probably have smoked weed and will smoke weed with me, but they're not smokers. The legalization of pot has, hasn't really impacted us because we don't buy our weed from dispensaries. Because we're not 21. But if we can find someone who's 21, that legalization, oh my god, is it tight. There's this service that a few Cleveland kids found that gives you two like pretty high quality scannable fake IDs. They'll go to a lot of the dispensaries. The legality of like selling weed has definitely opened up that opportunity. But in terms of outside of that, I don't think access has changed that much. Like the price hasn't changed. Actually, I've noticed uh, the price of weed has gone down actually for me. Yeah, this shit, $20 eighth. Yeah, same. Yep. It's so easy for us to get weed to the point where it's like easier than getting water. All right. It's in school, outside of school, in a car, outside of, you know, everywhere. It's, you can smoke weed, it, it, people just don't care where they smoke weed anymore. You know, it seems like every time I go out and I seek out information about one of my wrestlers or maybe somebody in my class that uses, I'm always surprised that it's more than I thought. And I always kind of assume the worst. It's always more, always more than I expected. The only chronic I have is just chronic headaches from having to do so much work. It's um, pretty much a microcosm of Portland Public Schools. It's about 70% white, 30% non-white. I would say predominantly middle class to upper middle class. The middle income, although the range of incomes is present, there's uh, a lot of affluent students. Home prices are very high in this area. Students at Cleveland, especially students who have been in the Ivy Diploma program, um, have gone everywhere. Uh, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Columbia. It's a very good school. People, it's a school people want to go to. I know that there are people who live in other attendance areas and um, do the uh, play the address game to get here. It's highly regarded because of the IV program. A lot of the full IV kids are raised in an environment where it's just assumed that they aren't going to do those things. Their parents just tell them, like, you're not going to do that. It's assumed that you'll do your homework, and it's assumed that you'll get these grades, and it's assumed you'll get these test scores. And then another one of the things that is just assumed from the get-go is that you aren't going to do drugs. The few kids who do don't project it as much, and there's just a far lesser percentage. People really have the wrong impression of how much young people use marijuana. I had one person say, 80% of people in my high school use marijuana. It's like, that's impossible. Nine out of 10 people, like on a regular basis. I would think about 98%. The most is around 40% of kids will say they regularly use in any particular high school. I think what happens is if you're using, you don't really hang out with people who don't. Um, and people who don't don't really want to be around people who are high and drunk, you know, because it's not fun if they're sober. Um, so the, the worlds get very divided. Doing drugs is like one of the only things that divides the school. It's not really a click school. There aren't jocks. Nobody thinks, I mean, everybody knows that's just ridiculous. There's not really a popular kids. The only real divide there at the school is if you do drugs or not. Weed's just out there, you know what I mean? Weed's not even a bad thing anymore. Um, but I do think that other drugs are becoming more prevalent than weed, more important than weed. Weed's kind of like dialing down, and Xanax is definitely coming like up to be a, like a new drug. When smoking was a huge deal last year, people were smoking a lot, but then you had homies who were like, hey man, like you ever done Xanax before? And people were like, no, nah, I ain't never done Xanax before. Like They want to try it, it's something new. 
it's like you know weed is old now people just smoke weed you know everybody does it it's not cool anymore i've seen seniors of your guys' class you know what i mean who just smoked weed before and i used to kick it with them and then they just got addicted to xanax and stuff xanax every day molly twice a week and it's like wow the fact that like like people can say, oh, weed isn't a gateway drug, weed isn't a gateway drug. That might be true. Like doing, like smoking weed, you're not going to be like, I want to go do heroin now after smoking weed, you know what I mean? But because smoking weed and you smoke with a whole bunch of people, once a new drug is added to that group and the social like network and everything, it becomes a new drug. People at Cleveland kind of get caught up and like everyone is like, Kind of pressuring each other. I think it was four, bro. No, just take it, bro. Hey, pump that shit. Pump that shit in your bike, real quick. Real quick. Oh. Like there's this group mentality that like, oh well, they can do it, so it's not gonna hurt me. And I think people are like less likely to know their limits because they trust that like, oh, it didn't hurt my friend, so it's not gonna hurt me. Last year when I was a senior. I don't think I knew more than like three kids that had like done Xanax. M maybe, maybe three. It's just such a like accessible thing, and it's gotten to the point where it's like just as accessible and just as like popular as weed. I had never really bought into the whole gateway drug ideology, but it really did seem like a lot of kids who just smoked weed last year had moved on to other stuff. I can't say names or anything, but I definitely know some uh, people that have gone from smoking weed, like homies that I know, like I smoke weed with, like I used to smoke with them all the time, and then they, you know, you don't really see them for a little while, you see them at functions and you see them at parties, completely gone. Definitely, I have definitely have friends that have gone from smoking weed to totally different drugs. That I mean, for some reason, people, it's a gateway drug, but I'm never going to go to that other shit, so. I mean, lots of people do. One of my friends is doing cocaine right now. It's, it's turn it into a bad thing. How old is he? Uh, he is 14 right now. If you decide to do cocaine, then that's your fault. It's not marijuana's fault. But I do think that there are people that smoke every day or multiple times a day or dab every day, and um, they get tired of it and they're still chasing the high. I wouldn't say it's a gateway drug. Um, actually, I don't know. Just splice that up however you want to splice it, because that was a contradictory answer. Um, I don't believe in gateway drugs. I have seen kids start with heroin. I have seen kids start with ecstasy. I've seen kids start with uh, marijuana. Whatever a person tries first is their gateway drug. I know many people who have smoked weed or even smoke weed pretty regularly and they've never tried anything else. Like I really do believe that and I think that there are people who genuinely can just want to smoke weed. I've definitely seen people who just like, you know, weed is for me and that's, that's my business. But the people that I see that you smoke weed and then go on to other things, it's just, it's readily accessible, it's there, it's something that they can try. Like who are you getting your weed from? You're getting your weed from somebody that sells drugs and you know, a lot of drug dealers don't just sell weed, they sell other drugs. So if you're going and you're buying weed from this guy that sells blow, and every single time you buy weed from him, he's like, oh, I've got some good blow, I've got some good blow, I've got mushrooms, I've got this. I could see how that would lead to a gateway effect if you may be trying the drugs that this guy has. I've maybe bought weed like twice in my life, but it was just always like, people I hung out with always had it. Um, and it's kind of a social thing. People want to do it with people, so they'll offer it to you. I think there's also like an undertone of guys always having weed, and guys always sh like sharing weed with girls. I mean, like I wasn't like I was like actually getting my own weed for free. It was that I was hanging out with pe girls and guys who already had bought weed, and they were willing to share it. Obviously, some girls do smoke, um, but I think most don't want guys to uh, look at them as a smoker. Yeah, it's definitely way less acceptable for girls to smoke a lot. I feel like they're kind of looked upon as like trashy. And you're also kind of seen as like the bro. Like the girls who smoke are usually like hang out with a ton of dudes and like are kind of seen as like that girl. My experience is it's more difficult as a, as a female to find a lot of like females who smoke regularly. Um, the only people that I can think of from my high school that would smoke every day throughout the day were male. I don't think there's much representation of women in the stoner culture. I see movies all the time. I was raised watching movies where you would see girls drinking and partying and like doing this thing. So I guess growing up I was like, oh yeah, like that's what I'm gonna do when I'm a grown up woman. Like this is what we're supposed to do. But there's not really any girls smoking pot 
in like mainstream media. And I think that that has translated to real life as well, because we kind of learn how to behave based on what we see in mainstream media. I think people are extremely influenced, and not just kids, adults, everybody. I think we're all influenced by the media in ways that we don't even realize. To be honest, more than like the legalization influencing younger people to start smoking weed, I think like music has a huge, way bigger impact yeah. on people trying drugs yeah. at a young age. I was listening Coding. to Wiz Khalifa back in like 8th and ninth grade, like before I even smoked weed or knew what he was talking about, but like <laughs> that's like how I was exposed to it. All the lyrics, you have like Migos, you have like Currency, you have uh, Dr. Dre, you have Snoop Dogg, you have all these rappers who are great rappers by the way, but they're all, you know what I mean, half their songs are about like pussy money weed and rap has a huge influence the lyrics are about smoking about like doing xanax and doing drugs people do xanax at parties and they function at parties while listening to this kind of music i took 56 bars all in one month nigga and i'm still drinking i can still see the scar on nigga hand man shit real crazy i've been taking these models still not now because a nigga too faded i'm a Future is a, a very interesting rapper. I've been listening to a lot more of his music recently. He's interesting because he raps about a lot of the things that other rappers rap about, drug use, but at the same time, he a lot of his music is very dark and sad, which is funny because it's also considered kind of party music, but he raps about being a drug addict. He raps a lot about his codeine use and talks all the time about how he's an addict, essentially, either by implying it or just saying directly. Fuck the fame, I'm sipping lean when I'm driving. All this cash in it, ain't nowhere to hide it. I'm an addict and I can't even hide it. Don't you pay Before it was rap music, it was like rock music, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And now I think probably one of the biggest uh, forces in that is hip hop because it's become so mainstream and popular. Wake up in the morning, smoke a blunt. I still ain't high, man what the fuck, I grab the wax, I grab the torch, I light it up, I'm high as fuck. A lot of people dab, a lot of people dab. It's definitely a big thing, like people get dab pens, dab like on top of their bowls, dab everywhere, you know, dabs are fun, so. <laughs> Dabbing has been interesting because two years ago um, when I would ask kids, you know, have you dabbed, they you know, half of them would say, I don't know what that is. Now, even if people don't use marijuana, they know what dabbing is. And they can say, no, I don't do that, or yes, I do two hits or one hit, you know, or um, when I see a kid that can do three hits of a dab and they're still telling me they're conscious, it tells me how much they're using. You can take one dab and be really high and it's less smoky on your lungs, whereas you can take, you can smoke like five bowls and be just as high off one dab. So it's like, you don't have to like inhale the smoke as much. Then again, like people just get really high off dabs and just kind of like melt into the couch and can't move. So. Um, dabbing is a really concentrated form of marijuana where you infuse it with butane, you cook it down so it's a real concentrated paste, and then you take it, you take a little tiny bit of it, and you put it on apparatus, you heat it up really high with a blowtorch or something, and you take it, you inhale it. And for most people, that one hit is enough to last them, you know, for most of the day. It gets you so much more higher. Taking a dab, I've seen 400, 300 pound kids take a one dab and are knocked. Like completely lights out, just like asleep. I think it's only a select people who have like better lung, better lungs, you know, can dab. And just like who don't see weed as getting high anymore because uh, a dab can do more than that. What happens for most kids is that they're regular users and they no longer get that really, you know, good buzz anymore. So they dab and that is such a high concentration so quickly that they can feel that high feeling again. I know that there's groups here at Cleveland of kids who are dabbing every single day to the point where like they've lost their tolerance, so they have to dab. They wake up in the morning, they dab, they wake up, they go between classes, they dab, they go out lunch, they dab, and after school they dab. And it's really easy right before class because you can just smoke like three dabs and then just be high and go to class. Then I don't think that dabs are a good choice for any like person with a developing mind. Um, we don't have any research on putting that much THC in your brain at the same time. We have not studied uh, any 
effects of that yet. You know, it's something kids are doing. Clearly, it's probably having some impact, um, but we don't, we don't know. If you have no tolerance for dabs, one dab will get you really high, and you'll be like the <laughs> highest you've ever been. Like the first time I dabbed, I was, I was so high. The first time I dabbed, I was dead. People started videotaping, I was just done. I couldn't, uh, I, w I couldn't compute. You know, they'll try to dab and then their lungs can't even handle it and they get so high that they forget to breathe sometimes and they pass out. That's what, uh, that, that's what happens. I didn't hear about it at all. And I had like junior, sophomore friends, like I feel like I would have heard about it somewhere. But once I got into a sophomore, then people started mooking and everybody was like, oh, it's really gross at first in the first few months of school. And then it progressed. And then by the end of the year, everybody was mooking pretty much. A mook is when you put tobacco and weed in a bowl and smoke it. So if you've ever smoked a spliff, it's the same thing, but out of a bong. There's so many names for it. Mook, Dirty Bull, Mole Bull, Mole Rip, whatever. Mixing marijuana and uh, nicotine or tobacco, um, I think it's been around, at least this, when I was a kid, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's been around for uh, decades. Um, I think, again, with uh, the new vehicles, with all these uh, different, really um, amazingly engineered apparatuses, um, you can really get higher levels. It has so much more of an effect on you, I guess. I love it. <laughs> Keeps me awake, just the head rush from it. It saves weed too. True. You're ripping half tobacco bowls. It's intense as fuck. You get a head rush and you just Sometimes die. It's like that part on Spaceballs when they go yeah. warp speed and like yeah. the whole people like, seize. Whatever guys seizures like happen. flatter. Seizures happen. I've seen like literally over six people have seizures just from taking one move. And she just lit it and hit it very fat and then she just kind of like started like holding her mouth and like shaking and then she went and laid down on the ground and started convulsing and just seizing out and then we had to kind of help her and get her on her side that way she could throw up but then after she threw up she was fine. It's addictive, it's physically addictive. It's hard to stop moving. It's extremely difficult. I've I've tried it. It's hard on like not even like mental because you all you think about is wanting to take a move, but also physically. You know what I mean? Like you sweat more. You you're more agitated. You're more angry because all you want to do is like this release. Because the high you get from a move is totally different than smoking weed. I know, like by the time I turn about like 20, I'm gonna stop that because it's really unhealthy for you. And obviously, I know that it's so bad for you. I don't advise it at all. I don't advise it. I, just love it. I need to quit, but. I I see why people do it. Don't cop it know and get it going. Record another song about the way that I'll be blowing. I'm on that strong, break it up on top my phone. Crack the Dutch on my way home. Need a blunt to reach my zone. Don't smoke joints, but I'll do cones. Rolling up while getting down. Got me cruising through the city, burning gas. All I wanna do is cruise and burn that hippie grass. Now. In this state right now, the number one DUI for uh, under 21 is marijuana use. Not marijuana and alcohol, marijuana use. If I think about how many people drive while they're high, if that many people drove while they were drunk, there would be a lot more accidents. Let me just say that. Almost all my friends drive while they're high. When you're drunk, it affects your equilibrium and your balance. Like you're physically affected. And I think when you're high, it's it's more of a sensory thing and more of a mental thing. And those are things that you're able to control. I feel like you're much more cautious and possibly paranoid when you're smoking weed or you're high, opposed to when you're drunk and you're just, you know, very confident and kind of, you know, we just go for it. Uh, it distorts time. It slows time for that one person, <laughs> but not for the car, not for people around them. So they're experiencing time in a slower way. So you could think, oh, that's cool. You know, well, they just won't speed. Well, they might, might also not get out of the way when they need to. Um, they might also be turning the wrong direction on the wrong, driving the wrong side of the road and not realize that in enough time to react. 
So um, I think that we have to be real careful when we think about it being safer to drive because the evidence is showing us that it's absolutely not safe to drive high. It really depends on the person. There are a lot of friends that I wouldn't want to drive me anywhere while they're high, but there are friends that I'd feel comfortable. It's different if a person is someone who smokes often and like habitually does that and so they're able to function in that state of mind. Um, you may have learn to compensate uh, to a certain extent but when you're put in a situation where you have to think quickly that it's not a situation you're usually in it's going to challenge that when i smoke i feel like i feel like i love more only because i feel like i care more about what really matters to me nice catch all is about to turn you can't see very good now as i was saying uh, drugs are bad you shouldn't do drugs if you do them, you're bad, because drugs are bad, okay? It's a bad thing to do drugs, so, so don't be bad by doing drugs. The issue is, is that all the education that exists right now is based upon, like, you know, 80s, like, 1980s drug warrior culture and, like, you know, say no to drugs, and it's, it's all, like, like, pretty terrible propaganda that everybody sees through. And it makes me seem un unreliable. Um, and it makes teachers seem unreliable. You're presenting one side of the issue. You're right, it doesn't work. And that's, that's as a teacher, that's something that I'm constantly struggling with. And then on the other side, there's like people like, oh, like, if you're gonna use it, just use it responsibly, which to a lot of, you know, younger people can mean like, oh, it's okay to smoke weed. People just through their own personal use can see that you can smoke a lot of weed and like be pretty okay. And that kind of really goes against uh, some of these notions that have been pushed on us. These scare tactics that we've been using, it's bad, like your uh, brain is gonna rot, all of these things. The most terrible drug, it's, it's super addictive, it's going to ruin your life. What happens is people meet other people that are doing these things and it's just not true. People just go to the other extreme of that, which is that it's completely fine, it could, it could not possibly do you any harm, and that it's just this healing herb that you can just smoke as much of it as you want. Then there's drugs like marijuana, which literally hurt almost no one. If marijuana turns your life into a loser, it's just because marijuana got there first. Like, you really had issues. If pot is what does you in, you, you're, you might just be a crazy person. If you look into it, you can find a lot of propaganda on either side of the issue. There's much more propaganda on marijuana than there is actual information that's useful. There's a whole lot of people that can say a whole lot of things about anything on the internet with no credentials whatsoever, and um, they can say it well. People in my world don't want to say anything unless they have the evidence. You know, they, they feel that there should be some um, scientific way of assuring what they're saying. So there's much less of that because there's less research on marijuana. So there's so much more propaganda. It's all political. There are people who are pro-legalization and then they're just going to tell you every reason why marijuana isn't bad or why it's good. And you can find, see whole documentaries about that that don't show the other side whatsoever. As a result of this culture of acceptance, uh, these high school kids, some of these high school kids smoke weed to an obsessive level. When you look at the research, it's clear it's much more acceptable to kids than it used to be even seven years ago. There's a huge culture of just absolute, no questions asked, acceptance. It's funny because like within the, the weed culture, like you know, people will like put on Snapchat like, oh, like smoking a bowl in the morning or like lunchtime like blunt or whatever. You don't ever see people like, oh, taking a shot before school. First of all, like it's seen as like not cool, but it's also seen as like really irresponsible. But like within the weed cult, within like weed culture, it's kind, it's all right to really like tout or to show off how much you use weed. It's almost like a competition in some friend groups. Like whoever, who can smoke the most, like who can like do the most dabs. It's kind of been a, a big, a recent cultural phenomenon. And there hasn't been like a long period of time where our, the society, our society has collectively created norms or rules or whatever about weed use. And you know, you, you definitely can't say the same for alcohol because you know, alcohol, it's like understood that like alcoholism is a really big problem, but there aren't these same norms with marijuana. It makes it like the Wild West, you know, like nobody, there's no rules, there's no real understanding because there's no research. 
so everyone can have their like their own opinion that can be based upon you know anybody else's opinion you know I've been victim myself to like justifying it uh, in my head and thinking that smoking it on a regular basis as long as you're not doing it too much uh, couldn't possibly have any effect on you which I don't think that I can say that. I don't really know. I don't think anybody really knows how it will affect people in the long term. It's amazing that we have not been able to do the kind of research we should on it. You know, when you see something that's been used for decades and years and hundreds of years, you got to wonder there must be something that is good about it, that it keeps persisting. And it would be nice to really drill out the good stuff and, you know, decrease the risks of the stuff that causes people harm. You can't have a real honest debate or discussion without having some statistics and quantitative information on exactly what's happening. We don't have really good research now, even in adults, but absolutely in kids and uh, teenagers, we don't know the full impact of marijuana, good or bad, um, with kids. We know, you know, some bad things that we've seen. If there's any time that you really shouldn't use marijuana, it's when your brain's developing. The adolescent brain, even up to the mid-20s, is still developing. The brain itself is almost done, but what isn't done is some of the pruning and uh, connections being made during adolescence. There was a study in New Zealand that looked at um, people from toddler age up to, I think they're about now uh, around 38, and they were able to follow those that had decided to use marijuana and began to use it and used it consistently um, up till adulthood, and those that didn't. Um, people, some people had used other drugs, but they were able to control or neutralize that other drug use and really see what was the effect of marijuana. And what they found was that people that used marijuana had um, eight points lower on average IQ than the people who didn't use uh, marijuana. And the question is, well, does that get better when you get older and you stop using? They didn't find that even up to age 38 that people recovered. So there's a thought that there might be some permanent damage there, but more research needs to be done to confirm that. Like I've heard about it before, just that's basically all I heard about it. And I think it might be true, <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> I did not know about the study. I doubt that there are a lot of people that are well educated on the latest research of marijuana. Yeah, I'm aware of all of it actually, but I don't really give a fuck, so. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked up studies on it and it only lowers your IQ by eight points, and I mean, I'm, I'm pretty smart, so I, I, I was pretty smart and now I'm dumber. Yeah. And, like, because in middle school I'd only smoke like once a week. <clears throat> I'm like that would be that. a big deal. When you start out, you're like, holy shit, I smoked today. Yeah, because you just get so high. But then the more you smoke, the more your tolerance goes so up, like, and I then need go, yeah. you need it more to it's even feel it. <laughs> People can stop smoking weed. I could stop smoking weed. It's just a matter of like, do you really want to? It's not like a craving sort of addiction. Yeah. It's kind of like you know, it feels nice and you have access to it. So let's smoke. Yeah. <laughs> if I stopped smoking pot, I would be sad. Like I would be like bummed because like. <laughs> I mean, like, I would be like, oh, like, I, I miss smoking pot. Like, I kind of liked that. When people talk about being dependent or addicted to uh, marijuana, um, a lot of times people will say to me, you know, teens will say, well, it's just a psychological problem. It's not really physical, and it's uh, not really that bad. I can stop anytime I want. Um, and so I'll say, okay, go ahead. You know, they'll come back, and they'll say, well, I, I stopped for two weeks, and then I you know, I decided I just wanted to go back. I said, well, that decided I just wanted to go back is the dependence. At one point, I calculated the number of days that I didn't smoke weed between the time I started smoking weed heavily, uh, which was very shortly after I started smoking weed to begin with, and by the time I got clean, it was like less than a couple weeks. So it was the first thing I did when I woke up. Um, I smoked weed with my friends before school. Uh, I would frequently leave school to go smoke weed. After school, the first thing I did would be to smoke weed, and then I would just stay high all day long, smoke weed before I went to bed, go to sleep, and do it the next day. There were points where I was 16, 17, where I was drinking close to a bottle of liquor a day. I would need to drink just to fall asleep, and I would wake up when I was no longer drunk and have to drink more so that I could get back to sleep. And then uh, when I was 18, I got into to meth and heroin. Like, it's the real deal, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, I was just addicted to smoking weed and I have these views. Uh, 
Uh, I remember very clearly my first time being high and I just thought it was the best thing ever. I wanted to do it all the time. And I remember thinking, I couldn't understand why other people didn't want to be high all the time like me. It's like, haven't you guys tried this, you know? So, um, clearly my, my brain chemistry is, is different than the average folk. Whether it was genetic, whether it was environmental influences uh, on me growing up, I was addicted as soon as I started using and that had nothing to do with the drugs, that was me. I tried for for a long time to stop smoking weed, but then when I finally went to rehab for smoking heroin, like I got help and was able to stop using heroin. So it's like, uh, was I that much more addicted, right? Um, I don't know, but I can say without a doubt that the mental processes that occurred in me and the obsession and the compulsion that manifested in me uh, were exactly the same, whether I was smoking weed or whether I was using other drugs. It was the same compulsive behavior. Uh, it was the same psychological uh, addiction and processes. When I reached out for help, people didn't understand. I literally told my doctor, you know, I'm addicted to smoking weed. Like, I want to stop smoking weed. Um, I was using a bunch of other drugs at the time too, but I figured that was the safe one, right? I'm addicted to smoking weed and uh, I want to stop and I don't know what to do. And he literally told me that you cannot be addicted to smoking weed and that I need to just stop. Like, that was his answer. So what are we doing for these people, right? What can we do about that, right? Um, we have to inform people, right? I think education is the solution here. I think the first thing people need to do is to educate students, they need to educate kids about weed, you know what I mean? They need to show that they could do this. Some of the tax revenue created uh, from legal weed should be put towards education. There needs to be less anti-weed propaganda and less pro-weed propaganda, and there needs to be an honest look at the effects of the drugs, and that needs to be conveyed to the youth. Uh, in a much better way because right now I think a lot of people are just ignorant. Do I think people accepting that uh, other people smoke marijuana regularly is a bad thing? No. Um, do I think it might be a problem that people accept smoking weed all day long every day is a normal thing for some people? Yeah. I think it depends. I think it's, I think it's not necessarily a bad thing or not necessarily a good thing. Same thing with alcohol. Marijuana is a drug. Like it's not, it's, people always say it's like willy nilly like yes it's a wonderful thing but it's not just a flower. It's still a drug and if you use a drug too often it can cause damage. If more states want to legalize, if other countries are looking, learn from what we're doing because we're out here. <laughs> Uh, in the forefront. We're making mistakes, we're hopefully going to correct some of those mistakes, but they're mistakes that other people don't have to make. One of the main ones is get out right in front and talk about the risks and um, the challenges parents may have with their kids possibly wanting to use, helping parents understand that there are risks for their kids, and helping kids be able to make a better choice. Get out in front and give people the education, the real education. Um, not scaring, but just, you know, the real education of what this um, particular uh, chemical does in our brains so people can make better choices. I think that would be really helpful. This is a hard part. For me, I wish that I never smoked weed. I, never, I wish that I never hit my first bong. I really wish I didn't because one, it wasn't like it was smoking weed and that was fine, but then I started to mook and that became addictive and that became like a part of my life. I, I blew off work, I blew off school, I blew off girlfriends, I blew off homies to just to smoke. And one night it hit me that like I was smoking alone and it all hit me that wow, like weed is definitely, like smoking weed is something that it can become a problem. And to all like freshmen and all upcoming like freshmen and whatnot, I advise to experiment, but wait till your brain, or like, wait till you're at least like a senior or a junior, wait till your brain's a little bit more developed. The brain isn't developed till you're 26 years old. Like, experiment, yeah, we can smear and smoke some weed, that's fine, but don't make it a, like, don't make it a huge deal in your life that you would blow off like your family for smoking, you blow off school, you blow off, you know what I mean? Do it responsibly. You know what I mean? Don't. Just be responsible, have fun, like don't, like it's hard, just don't fall into like the social norm about smoking. Don't be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go smoke. 
I soak every day before school, at lunch, on my way home from school, and then when I get back to my house, I smoke, and then usually I like leave, come down here, smoke a whole bunch more, and then go back to my house, and then smoke, and then shower, and then smoke again, and go to bed. So, <laughs> so you know, that's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's not the, I can smoke more. What the fuck is that? Is this an earthquake? Dude, what is that? It's a fucking earthquake. It's an earthquake. Might be. I started with a shitty memory, now it's like, oh my god. I started with a good memory, I and I'm gonna let me tell you, next week I will not remember today. I don't remember the yeah, interview, but I We forget I days really easy, like we can't remember like, we you remember like what happened, so we can't remember work. like when it happened. Like, we'll remember the big stuff that happened. Like, it's cause yeah. we do a lot of things, a lot of times. Like, <laughs>